Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, all of you in television land and those of you who watch us now on YouTube, our channel, Rick Adams Uncensored slash The Deadly Experiment. Those of you who watch uh, the internet, and younger people particularly, will appreciate that fact that uh, you can view us anytime and any place online on your phones. We live in an incredible age, an age of high technology, and God is using this technology just as Satan is. Satan is deceiving the world, but God and his children are revealing that hidden agenda, that darkness with his light of truth. With me today is my co-host, and he is back again by popular demand. Matt, how are you? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me, Ray. Amen. You've given a great testimony in previous programs of how you came to the Lord. It's good to have you back. And, uh, you know, today we're going to hear one video on this program that I think is so important for people to understand that they need to go back in time to about the year of 1960-ish and the Dan Smoot Report, which was an attempt at that time to help rescue America from its policies of self-destruction. We're almost there now, folks. But this will show you this old black and white expert on the Constitution, Dan Smoot, probably the greatest scholar that I have ever come across in my years of study. And he's going to talk about constitutional rights, seeing as we, at this time of year, we've just passed the so-called Independence Day celebration. And you know, Matt, Independence Day today is totally irrelevant. It's an anachronism. It means nothing to the average Joe, doesn't it? No. Uh, I mean, uh, it's really just uh, another excuse to get together and barbecue, you know? And um, drink. And drink, of course, you know, and just the American excess. It's like any other holiday, it's been uh, totally, totally misconstrued. And I mean, what are we independent from at the moment? We're a total police state. I right. mean, martial law is imminent. Um, things are not looking good as far as the <clears throat> reverence for the Constitution, as we'll get into. Um, totally, totally irrelevant. And, yes. uh, and just another excuse. I mean, it's amazing how you can see it now, and I wonder how many out there watching can understand that they don't even know the signers of the Declaration of Independence, Rhode Island's role in adding the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights, to that Constitution. They have no idea. They couldn't even name, probably, one of the signers of the Declaration, but they can name, you know, all of the minutia that's being spoon-fed to us today by the media, by the controlled media, every baseball team, every yep. movie star, every rock singer. They can go down the line, but they can't name one of their founding fathers. And, you know, the same is true of our scriptures. Our scriptures sit on the shelf if they're on the shelf, and it collects dust. They don't pick it up. They don't read it. They don't get on their, their, uh, you know, their androids and look up the Word of God to see what it says about the time we're living in today. And we are living in those times of the end, folks. We're in the last days described by the prophets and by the apostles like Matthew and Mark, <laughs> Luke, John, Jude. All of them were teaching about what? The two seed lines, Satan's children and God's children and the world in between them and how it will end. Not going to end in war. It's going to end in peace, a false peace with a fake Jesus coming into his temple in Jerusalem. So you're right, Matt. It's widespread ignorance, widespread <clears throat> uncaringness for the word of God, caring about nothing but pleasure. And doesn't the apostle Timothy say that in chapter 3, verse 1, 2 Timothy? 3 verse 1, he talks about perilous times coming, men loving pleasure more than God, mm -hmm. worshiping the creation, not the creator, um, backbiters, liars, deceivers, uh, having fun, and all of these frivolous activities. It tells us what, what we're experiencing today. Exactly what's going on, yeah. The excess, uh, um, <clears throat> it's really a... Uh, well, you know, I, I love Timothy, and... Um, Getting into it. I'm sorry, I'm a little stuttery right now. Uh, give me a second. That's all right. Well, Timothy was only 19, you know. Yeah, true. You he know, was and, your age. And he was listening to Paul, and you know, he was getting the advice, and um, it, it was really something, yeah. It was great to, to know the <clears throat> Word of God in Timothy's time, and, and now today we're in the days they spoke of, folks. 
They couldn't live now, but we're alive now at this time. So let us do this now. Let us pause and let us give you uh, the report on the Constitution, what it's all about, and listen very carefully, watch, and be mindful that we have lost it all now. We're just about at the very end of that proverbial thread of the Constitution where we are in America today. Right now, the Dan Smoot Report. Constitution of the United States. We cannot reestablish constitutional government and restore our free republic until a decisive number of Americans understand the Constitution and use it as a guide to political action. A Constitution is meaningless unless it is construed to mean exactly what it says, and unless agents of government are compelled to obey all its provisions. You cannot depend on politicians to tell you whether they violate the Constitution. They all say they respect and obey it. You cannot depend on any agent of government to tell you what your Constitution means. You must read it yourself to find out. When you find out, you should do your utmost to remove from public office every official who violates the Constitution's clear meaning, if you want to save your own freedom and help restore your republic. I have published the full text of the Constitution. All who order copies of this broadcast will receive it. That is a summary of my report on Constitution of the United States, the full report after a message from my sponsor. The Constitution delegates the major powers of the federal government to Congress. The Constitution provides for a Supreme Court specifying and limiting its original jurisdiction, giving Congress absolute authority to control, limit, or abolish the court's appellate jurisdiction. Federal courts are given no authority over any state laws. The first article of the Constitution begins all legislative powers herein granted. This means that the federal government cannot legally exercise any power not clearly granted in the Constitution. The 52-word preamble includes promotion of the general welfare among the broad purposes for which the Constitution was ordained, but the preamble is not a grant of power. The only other place where promotion of the general welfare is mentioned in our Constitution is Section 8 of Article 1. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imports, and excises, to pay the debts and pr provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. Many assert that this general welfare clause gives government broad powers to do anything which the President and Congress claim to be necessary for common defense and general welfare. That is not true. James Madison, father of the Constitution, said the Constitution grants no general powers to the federal government. He explained that the so-called welfare clause is not a grant of power, it is merely a heading for enumerated powers which Congress may exercise to provide for the common defense and general welfare. James Madison delivered a speech on this subject to the first United States Congress, quote, if Congress can apply money indefinitely to the general welfare and are the sole and supreme judges of the general welfare, they may take the care of religion into their own hands. They may establish teachers in every state, county and parish, and may pay them out of the public treasury. They may take into their own hands the education of children, establishing in like manner schools throughout the Union. They may undertake the regulation of all roads other than post roads. In short, everything from the highest object of state legislation down to the most minute object of policy would be thrown under the power of Congress. For every object I have mentioned would admit the application of money and might be called, if Congress pleased, provisions for the general welfare." End quote. Madison also said, the powers delegated to the federal government are few and defined. Those which are to remain in the state governments are numerous and indefinite. The powers reserved to the states will extend to all the objects which in the ordinary course of affairs concern the lives, liberties, and properties of the people, the internal order, improvement, and prosperity of the state. In short, the Constitution created a system in which the federal government is limited to enumerated powers, states remaining sovereign republics with regard to their internal affairs. In such a system, state governments, which can be controlled by local citizens, have elastic, unspecified power to experiment with social reform legislation, which may seem to be required. Legislation, for example, dealing with unemployment, medical care for the destitute, and other such general welfare programs. 
If a state government abuses its broad powers, it will lose productive citizens to other states. The experience of other states and competition among states will force correction of major errors. If the federal government is given broad general powers to experiment with social reform legislation and to intervene in private and state affairs, the stupidities of the general bureaucracy can be imposed on the whole population uniformly, leaving no place for oppressed citizens to seek refuge, no competition to force correction or even admission of error, no competitive example anywhere to prove that freedom works better than bureaucratic planning. If federal officials assume power to experiment with programs not authorized by the Constitution, they break the contract of government, the Constitution. When, for any cause, however popular, for any need, however great, for any emergency, however dire, federal officials violate the binding contract of the Constitution, nothing is left to fend off tyranny. When the federal government commits one act not authorized by the Constitution, it cracks the dam erected to control governmental power. The crack may at first be imperceptible, but eventually it will widen until the dam is gone, and a destructive flood of uncontrollable governmental power will engulf all. Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, expressed the unique American concept of a constitutionally limited federal government when he said, in questions of political power, speak to me not of confidence in men, but just bind them down from mischief with the chains of a constitution. Does this mean that an 18th century constitution prevents the nation from ever acting through the federal government to do something which a majority wants done? No. The people, by due process, can amend the constitution, granting power which they want government to have. By no other means can the Constitution be legally changed or limitations of the power of government legally altered. A Supreme Court decision is not constitutionally valid if it reads into the Constitution or its amendments some meaning not there when the Constitution and its amendments were adopted. Presidential decrees and acts of Congress are constitutionally invalid no matter what the Supreme Court says. And no matter how many previous decrees and acts may be cited as precedents, if said decrees and acts are not patently, constitutionally authorized. Obeying the Constitution does not mean obedience by the people. It means obedience by the federal government. The Constitution is a binding contract adopted by the people, meaning exactly what it says to be obeyed meticulously by all agents and agencies of government to be changed only by explicit constitutional process. Legislative, executive, and judicial usurpation of power has violated the Constitution so long and so outrageously that this nation is sinking day by day into a morass of lawless tyranny. We cannot reestablish constitutional government and restore our free republic until a decisive number of Americans understand our organic documents of government and use them as guides to political action. The organic documents are the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as amended. In the report on which this broadcast is based and in the report for the broadcast next week, I publish full text of our organic documents of government. The Declaration of Independence is too short to fill one whole report. The Constitution and its 24 amendments are too long for one report. So, in the report on which this particular broadcast is based, I publish the full text of the Constitution of the United States as written by the Founding Fathers at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, 1787, and as adopted by the original 13 states in the American Union. The actual text is prefaced with brief commentary on the meaning of the Constitution, the commentary taken largely from the Founding Fathers themselves. My broadcast next week will give full text of the Declaration of Independence and of all constitutional amendments with commentary. My hope is that a significant number of Americans will get, read, pass on to others, and discuss these documents, which are the foundation stones of our greatness as a nation, the only bulwarks to protect our liberties as civilized human beings. Unless a significant number of Americans do study these organic documents of government, and use them as guides to political action, our republic is doomed. 
A constitution is meaningless unless it is construed to mean exactly what it says and unless the agents of government sworn to uphold the Constitution are compelled to obey all its provisions explicitly. You should not vote for any politician who consistently, by his voting in Congress and by his support of federal programs and policies, violates the Constitution. You cannot depend on the politicians to tell you whether they violate the Constitution. They all tell you they respect and obey it. You cannot depend on any agents of government in the judicial, executive, or legislative branches to tell you what your Constitution means. You must read it yourself to find out. When you find out, you should do your utmost to remove from public office every official who violates the Constitution's clear meaning if you want to save your own freedom and help restore your republic. Well, folks, that's it, the Dan Smoot Report. Now, we don't have men of wisdom like that today. We have colleges, we have universities, we have law schools, but we don't have men of wisdom to understand that we have drifted 180 degrees, man, from the Constitution of our founding fathers. And, you know, the uh, men like Patrick Henry, and I call myself uh, Paul Revere on radio on Republic Broadcasting Network, and uh, I think of both men were great men, and, and particularly Patrick Henry. He was an opponent of the Constitution because he knew insightfully, prophetically, someday it would wind up being exactly what it is today. As George Bush put it, W, he said it's a GD piece of paper, and that's all it means, the Constitution. Tony Blair should be charged with war crimes based on the latest report in, Italy, in England about what he's done and what baby Bush did in Iraq. They should all be charged. Dick Cheney, particularly, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, they all lied us into war just as they did in First and Second World War. So, you know, where is our Constitution today? It's gone. Where's the Declaration of Independence today? It's not on the hearts of Americans. We're interdependent. How are we in interdependent? Think about it economically and so forth. Oh, well, I mean, for starters, how many billions of dollars do we give to Israel every year? I mean, it's, it's completely ridiculous. It's, uh, to think we're anything but, um, but just, we're like this war machine that, um, that gets pushed and pulled all over the world um, by the powers that be. You know, the, the Constitution is completely absent from school systems from, from everything. In fact, it's, it's we're, like you said, we're drifting in a, in a massive 180 away from, from sanity, from, uh, from <clears throat> what the Founding Fathers stood for. How about financially today? Do you oh. think people are dependent on their <clears throat> checks from the Absolutely. Government? I mean, look at this push for, for uh, I mean, as far as inflation is considered, I mean, look what Venezuela is going through. I think that's what we're going to go through soon. I mean, you know, in, in a society like this, you really, <laughs> where so many people are so oppressed, you really do need a lot of that social benefits. And, and just for them to have some dignity, but it's, it's totally, they, they've, it's, it's an extremely complicated issue and it's completely and utterly been blown up, blowing up in everyone's face as far as. Well, yeah, people have been seduced like uh, Eve was seduced by the serpent and bore Cain, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, she had sexual relations with him. She didn't bite off an apple tree and she was seduced holistically from head to toe and particularly her midsection you see uh, unfortunately we have to be honest with people that we are seduced in the mind today we're made to believe things that are not true we've just gone through a series of fake attacks we've seen the now the uh, pulse so-called club shooting in orlando um, i know that you've researched it i've researched it it's just another one of a long line of successive Department of Human Services and the Department of Homeland Security hoaxes that have been perpetrated. The federal government, the FBI, has just said, James Comey, forget about Hillary Clinton, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is he just said that the records on that club shooting, supposed shooting, what happened before, during, and after are sealed from the public. We'll never know what really took place. It's insane. Just like Sandy Hook, just like the Boston Marathon bombing drill. Mm, these events are orchestrated and staged, and um, what information we get. You know, even if these events happened organically, you know, on their own accord, 
which 99% of the time they don't, but if they did, it, it would still be utilized as a way, as a means of furthering the right. agenda of these elites. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, people will believe whatever they're told. A, a transgender, you know, gay, gay bar club gets shot up, and so you have the gun issue, you have the gay issue, you have the Islam, by an Islam, I mean, it's, it's literally like, it's all of the key components. All the, yeah, all yeah, the stereotypes, yeah. all the tropes, you know, they, they mesh them together. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous how anyone falls for it, but they eat it up because they can't conceive that um, such a widespread deception could be happening uh, uh, right under their noses. You know, the nature of a conspiracy is not that it's so well hidden that no one can see it. It's that it's so in your face, you're immersed in it. Mm -hmm. and, and until mm -hmm. you have eyes to see, there's, there's really no way of you recognizing the patterns here, but the patterns are so innumerable. You know, you have all of these official uh, stories um, adding up to nothing but major inconsistencies. You have uh, drills happening before these shootings. You have propaganda in the media happening before these shootings, predictive programming. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the list goes on. I, I could name like at least three instances where uh, the, this keyword Pulse and the Pulse nightclub has been brought out throughout the alternative and the mainstream media, uh, going back even even to last year, I think, you know? And wow. it's, these, these, these events are, are planned well in advance and uh, serve nothing more than to further an agenda and manipulate the minds of the masses and the emotions of the people. And that's really all the media stands for. Well, that's right. It's a military industrial media complex mm -hmm. today. Um, no question about it. We know about it because it's there. It's obvious. There is no dissent, no investigative journalism whatsoever today, despite no. what they'd have you believe. We don't have independent men anymore. You know, we don't we don't have any more of the, the Baltimore journals and, and people like Gary Garrett, you know, the people's pottage when he, he wrote about that and how the people were being seduced in the 1930s. And we just don't have any of the honest journalism um, that was the case at least 50 years ago, you know? Instead, we have the Walter Durantes from the New York Times who lied about the Soviet Union and couldn't see the murder of millions of souls under Stalin. You know, we have the, the, uh, the hypocrites and, and those that have told the stories of, of uh, others have written for the Washington Post, for mm -hmm. example. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and these reporters yes. and, and so-called journalists are, are are a, a part of this heinous crime of lying to people, yes. whether they know it or not. And you know, you see these well-tailored journalists and reporters on CNN who who have degrees and whatnot, and the public perception is that they know what's going on, and they're they're on the inside. They're literally reading from a script. That's that's their job, you know. Um, and they'll yes. take whatever information yeah. they can get from corrupted sources. And, and these people are all vetted, but you know, people don't understand that, they don't know that, and, and they have this sense of trust when it comes to what they see on well, CNN or on they, Fox. They do, but they, they say they don't. In yeah. poll after poll, uh, the American public has been polled and steadily downward have come their faith in the media. Yeah. Ever since 9-11, ironically, which was a real attack by the Zionists through the White House, through the Pentagon on America, it was a deliberate act of murder like Pearl Harbor was with Roosevelt. But ever since then, People have been polled. Do you trust the mm -hmm. official account? No. Do you trust the media as you used to? And here are the polls. The poll numbers come down. And we so come to this problem where people yeah. on one level or another understand that this system is, is totally collapsing or and, and um, that the establishment is, is totally an evil entity. They, they understand it's, it's corrupt and it's broken and it's wrong. And they, they'll even go so far as, yeah, I heard some shady things about that 9-11. I wonder what really happened, you know, but no one could ever know. Or, um, things about history like yeah JFK was totally killed by this you know I hear like the average Joe say something like that you know every now and again mm. and the, I'm yeah. like okay take it a step further though and and so we come to this problem where they they have an inkling but they don't research it and they don't most importantly apply it you know if you really you know people don't know what they believe if you ask someone do you really really question the story of September 11th because if you think that something fishy is going on there that means from that point on September 11th 2000 you know from that point on Everyone in the mainstream media who has ever advocated the official story of that is a part of this crime, or they're ignorant, and you can't trust anyone. That goes for media personalities, that goes for presidential candidates. Um, it's, it's so widespread, so people will have an inkling that something's wrong, but they won't apply it, and they'll still go out and vote, and they'll still listen to this and listen to that, and see a shooting here. Well, if you can't trust the biggest, the, the official story of the, the greatest terrorist attack ever on American soil, how can you trust 
anything from that exactly. point on. Exactly. You can't believe a single thing, as one man said. I don't believe anything since 9-11. Nothing at all. You see an image, but you don't know that it's real, but, because we've seen mm -hmm. how they've orchestrated through CGI. And someone who goes out and talks about this is looked at, as ironically, as narrow-minded. They're like, well, you do you think everything's a conspiracy? And that's coming from someone who doesn't know the nature of a conspiracy and, and hasn't researched the event itself and is, is really just taking in the official narrative as yeah. what the media well, says. I find that ironic that the people on the so-called left of this paradigm always criticize the Obama administration administration on everything, except they will not advance him credit for orchestrating <laughs> false events or false flags. How many shootings have happened since it's Obama a, took it's office? It's amazing. It's ridiculous. But that's conspiracy theory. We wouldn't want to do that. The media, which they deride as being left of center, far left, and so on and so forth, they will accept every single hoax that the media peddle. You know why? Because the same people who own the media own the major talk networks. Yep. They own the, well, Fox, the press. of course, CNN. Uh, Avi Novo now, an Israeli, owns it outright. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the the number two man now at the Fed is Stanley Fisher, who came right from the Bank of Israel. And the Bible tells us the fig tree is planted in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The evil fig tree would rule the world in the end time. Why don't we believe our Bible? We believe the liars like Tom Brokjaw, and we believe the Hillary Clintons and the Donald Trumps and people like this are not going to save you. They're going to further your demise. Um, if we have time left today's program, I want to get into this thing. Speaking of possible false flag or real attacks on America, because we know the time is coming when America is going to experience an attack on her soil here very shortly. Um, how about this, this upcoming event with all these religious people mm -hmm. gathered in Washington? Now, we haven't heard very much about this. Um, so I believe it's called Together Reset, and uh, it's Christians and Catholics are meeting uh, I guess in, in, in um, right in front of the Washington Monument, millions of Christians and Catholics mm -hmm. meeting together to, to unify. And uh, <clears throat> I believe the Pope's going to be there. Uh, I think it's July 16th or 17th. Mm -hmm. And I'm not hearing much about it from the mainstream media. And surprisingly, I'm not hearing much about it from the alternative media. But what I am hearing about it through the alternative media, it seems like it's a big, big buildup for some kind of a cultic event. I mean, you have Christians in Washington, D.C., the most satanic state filled with occultic architecture i mean architecture you can you can go back and and uh and look at the city planning and it, it's a pentagram you can go into there there is so so much it is so deep it, it is um just a, a, a city of, of illuminati monuments you know uh, you have the giant obelisk you know and um christians and catholics and nobody nobody really understands or researches that far but this event it's called together reset i believe and you have them all gathering and i, I think it's we're in the works for a major false flag attack or some kind of some kind of um, so it is very likely that it's possible mm -hmm. that something could happen even mm -hmm. while this program is being aired ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> because it's timely it's timely yep. since we are being told by the same corrupt government from the FBI Brennan of the CIA and so forth that we could have an American attack that is an ISIS oh, yeah. attack on American soil ISIS is nothing more than the Israeli state mm -hmm. internal security it was started by them it was begun by them we're financing it through Turkey we're financing it through NATO that's why you had a, a fake Brussels attack that's the headquarters of NATO it's all tying into the military industrial media complex and I don't want to put a date office. on it I wasn't um, <clears throat> you know it's it's likely you but just take be aware of this possibility yeah absolutely that anything could happen at any time that will bring down the economy it will bring down the political system just in time for another false selection this year and it will bring down all of the other add-ons to this complex myriad of problems. Most of all, the religious beast system will come. We're out of time. Oh, Matt, it's been a great pleasure again. Thank Absolutely. you for Absolutely. Always a pleasure. We'll be back again in the next program. Rick Adams, your producer and host for The Deadly Experiment. Watch us on YouTube as well. Goodbye, and Yahweh blesses elect.